Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of Combat Corner, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I have with me the number one contender, BKFC 135, fighting for the championship next Friday, September 13th at BKFC 66, Ryan Reber. Thank you, my man, for jumping on with us tonight. Absolutely. Talk Absolutely. about this. Talk about this fight you had with Alberto Blas. I mean, this is what you've this been doing it, this man. for. This is, you know, this is it, man. And and I always told myself and everybody else, in order to become legendary, you got to do some legendary shit. And you know, it's funny. I made a post on Facebook probably about I don't know two years back, wearing a legendary shirt. Mm -hmm. And I was like, my next moves, they will be legendary. You know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, it'd be one thing to fight a guy that was on his way out or, you know what I mean? But this guy's destroying everybody in the first round. So what better opponent than the universe wanted to put me in front of than a guy that's knocking everybody out in the first round or stopping everybody in the first round? He's saying he ain't really knocking them out, but he's stopping them. You know, kid's got power. He's explosive. Um, he damn sure and as handsome as me. All right. And, uh, you know, he um, I, I I don't expect anything less at this level. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're at the top of your game, man, what, what do you expect to fucking hand out? No, man. Like you could cherry way, cherry pick your way through, you know, the rankings as you're coming up, I suppose. But, you know, I, I really you know, I had none of my fights were real easy pickings, man. You know what I mean? Once once I made the mistake to go over to game bread and, and take a fight on a four day notice. You know, BKFC punished me, man. And they were like, oh, you want to pull some shit like that? Watch what we got for you next. Then they threw me with Travis Thompson, who was, you know, nine nine fights deep at that time. You know, and, and you know, once again, they wrote me off. They wrote me off. Oh, he, he ain't going to beat him. He ain't. I beat him. And not only did I beat him, it went six rounds. You know what I mean? Which it wasn't. Yeah, I see that. You know, I see so, that it was an overtime round. Oh, yeah. You know, so, I mean, you look at, you look at, the people who I fought and then look at the people who he's fought, you know, and he's definitely had some game opponents. You know, I take nothing away from, you know, uh, D Danny Alvarez or, you know, um, my man Keith Richardson or even um, uh, Roberto Armas, man. Like he, you know, he didn't even get a chance to throw a damn punch before the ref intervened and stopped that shit. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, I could say that he's a good opponent, but is he a tough opponent? You know what I'm saying? And I look to drag that toughness out of him. We're going to see how tough you are when your fucking face is hanging off or your eyes swollen or you mm -hmm. get hit with that jab and you're like, fuck, man. Yeah, that, that didn't feel too good. You know, so I, I just look to, to just take him out of his game, man. I, I know what his game is. I mean, it's obvious what his game is to come out. And I mean, you look at his MMA record, so he can't sit here and talk like there's going to be something new. He's going to mm -hmm. fucking come straight forward, and he's coming for me. And, you know, at the end of the day, I kind of like an opponent like that because I don't have to sit back and, and, and wait for me to come forward and wait on him. You know, I'm a counterfighter. So, you know, he play, that, that style plays into my favor a little bit more, I feel like. It's funny you mentioned MMA. I'm a big MMA fan. I, I watched the UFC. I got called out by Dana White on UFC 300. Uh, when we only had like 600 subscribers, I did a – commentary on ufc 300 because i thought the card overall was complete trash um in comparison to what they were building it up to be That's you know fire. you build up yes ufc 300 and you're sitting here saying this better be title fight title fight title fight like this these fights all better matter and they really we all know they didn't all that matter i'm sure you watch oh. mma as well oh, they absolutely. weren't they weren't like if you go back to ufc 100 when brock lesnar's fighting frank mir and gsp's fighting and was it Bisbing and Dan Henderson? Like you have cars. I mean, like that was built up and oh, they yeah. built up Conor McGregor and Jose Aldo and all that stuff. They built all this up. And then it was like, but, um, you know, you mentioned MMA and it's like when you have a, a striker who goes 10 and 0 and now he gets a wrestler and then the wrestler puts him on his ass and he doesn't yep. want to get up. I yep. know you're not wrestling, but yep. when you, when you look at a guy who's probably had a total of what, five minutes, in the ring total that that's total. a scary thing for him man and i would be yeah. nervous yeah. if that was me i mean because honestly man all my fights i could have done the same thing just said fuck it bit down on my mouthpiece and went for it and i probably 
nine out of ten times would have been successful doing it because I do have power. I do have speed. But I'm a lot more smarter and cautious when I get in there. And I'll play the waiting game for a minute and pick and choose my shots. And, you know, I know in this bare knuckle shit, it doesn't take much. If you mm. land good shots, it, you're out of there. You know, so the thing for me is to get hit. I mean, to, to give the hits and to not get hit, you know. And I got mm -hmm. very, very, very good fighting boxing. You know, I don't yeah. I don't look at myself yeah, as just a, a boxer or just a fighter or just because I've studied almost every form of martial arts that you could study. I've done Kung Fu. Kar I started with karate. Um, I've done MMA. I've done kickboxing. I've done regular boxing, you know, so and I got to train with some elite level guys in the 20 years that I've been doing this shit, man. So, you know, I've got to train with a guy who fought as an alternate in UFC 7 on NASA Stratsman. Um, I got to train with high level guys up in Connecticut. Brendan Ward, his dad taught me th the world of shit. You know what I mean? I went back up there for my Connecticut fight and he, you know, showed me some more things. So that's that's where my game is. I mean, everybody's like coach, 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 coach. Yes, your coach is pivotal, but your coach can only he can only show you so much. It's up to you to go out there and branch out to these other gym. Like I got Dave Mundell in my corner. That guy's a wizard up here, you know, when it comes to um, fighting. So all these people I surround myself, you know, and I tell everybody the same thing. You show me your friends and I will show you your future. So I choose to surround myself with nothing but outstanding people, whether they're champions, whether they want to be champions, whether they're on the way to become champions, whether they make, you know, X amount of money. You know what I mean? Like I surround myself with these people and you know, that that's my team. And I got a great team around me, man. And I don't, I don't hold just one person accountable. I hold myself accountable. If I'm not getting what I need at my gym, I'm branching out to Dave. I'm branching out to, you know, Jihad, his coach, or to, you know, Brandon Allen, one of the other, you know, star fighters on the roster. You know, I have so many different avenues that I can take. I just was out in Vegas at Mayweather's gym. I was training with Christine Ferreira's coach. You know what I mean? He put some knowledge into my head. And even if it's an hour, that hour, because I've yeah. been in the game for so long, I can absorb it very quick. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. he's showing me this. He's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use that. And, it, and it's just like, you know, I've always used Bruce Lee's philosophy. Use no way as a way and have no limitations as your limitations. And essentially add your own, you know, creativity to it. And, you know, that's where I am with it. You just, I'm going to, I'm going to pivot real quick. You mentioned yep. Fer Ferreira. She's fighting tonight against Masson Wong. Yep. What are your thoughts on that fight? I mean, I, like I said, when they asked me, I said, my heart goes with Jade. You know, I love Jade, but I, Christine is just on a fucking totally different level, man. And, you know, Jada, she, Jade, she, she'll, she's like psychotic, bro. I've never seen a girl just fucking so happy to just get the shit beat out of her or beat the shit out of somebody. <laughs> it's fucking crazy, bro. I'm Let like, me ask I you, love are, that. was that brown shit on her chest? Are those tattoos or is that like she just dropped like some blood, like fake I blood think on she, her chest? She likes the blood, bro. She's a crazy ass individual, man. I, I would, shit. I almost said I would pay to see her OnlyFans, but you got to pay to see that shit. You know what I mean? Like, she's fucking probably does some wild shit, man. You know what I mean? So it's like, but, you know, to answer your question, I, you know, like I said, my heart is with, 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 with Jade, but um, I know who's going to win that fight. I feel like, uh, I feel like Christine is just, she's just on a different level, man. And I got to train with her, with one or, with, I don't know if it's one of her coaches or her head coach, but that man, AJ, mm -hmm. he's a wizard, man, for sure. You know, and I wish I could have spent a little more time with him, but at the end of the day, I, I do get what I need at my gym as well. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. basically, man, it's it's hard work and simplicity, man. Like 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 Bruce Lee said, I'll, I'll quote Bruce again. You know what I mean? It's straightforward, man. There's you don't have to get caught up in all this crazy shit. It's it's pretty mm -hmm. simple shit. It's just about and then doing it. You know what I mean? So Ferrera kind of scares me, man. Like, fuck yeah, bro. I think she's she, fucking she's half of the men on the roster, she's 40, bro. She's 41 years old. Damn, she is? 41 years old. I don't know that. Well, and that's why I say, like, Crazy. bare knuckles, bare knuckles for the, the grown people. It really <laughs> is, man. This is, like, it ain't, it's, it could be a boneyard for, you know, ex, you know, UFC guys, the guys that burn mm, themselves yeah. out. They think with me because, you know, I'm a little older myself, mm. but it's, it's like, 
that saying always goes, I wish I knew it back then. Well, now I know it now, and I still have the look. You know what I mean? Because it is about the image as well. I mean, people who are going to be like, well, you're this age, and you're like, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel, and I perform, and I act like I'm still 29 years old. And But when I was 29 years old, I probably couldn't have done this shit. You know what I mean? And yeah. even being involved in it, not fighting, going to the shows and watching, the energy was different, man. It's just a different energy. And it's like, oh, you hear that. And you're like, oh, fuck, I know that hurt. <laughs> you know? And and it's and a lot of people, like, I was chop, chopping up with Teofimo Lopez in Miami when I was okay. down there. And he was like, yeah, y'all fucking crazy, bro. And he's a stud. You know what I mean? But you know damn well that yeah. boys ain't going to do no crossover. Especially the guys who are making millions in boxing. Yeah, you will not. never see them yeah, in bare knuckle. Never. Were- because they know the damage that can be done by a good mm-hmm. puncher. It, it's it's funny you mentioned that because I remember when um was it Polly Malinaj decided to fight Artem Lobov yeah in, in well, and he's got fucking and, little and, baby and, brittle and hands. his hands break in gloves right you know what did and you think? I, yeah I mean in a boxing match I'm sure he beat Lobov if he could just dance around Easy. for a ring and, and jab him to death he might still break his hands but in bare knuckle I'm sure his hands broke in the first three or four punches and oh yeah he was I, crazy I can't, I can't imagine that. I. I mean, the only yeah. one I see the, the the main boxer I see that looks good as a bot is, is Austin Trout. Yeah, um, I, and then um, Angulo, I saw his fight. He looked amazing. I mean, yeah, that guys, guy. I mean, he, he won just that took shit, all bro. those shots, and it was like boom, boom, boom. But that's he used to box that way too. Yeah. So he took those shots, and then he finished that fight with basically one shot. You know, looking at at this fight, I mean, your last fight, it seemed like it came out a little bit slow. Would you say? That wasn't the performance. Was it the last fight or was it two fights before? It was one of those previous fights. You're talking decision. about the Miami one with Prez? It was it Foy? Foy. That was your last fight, right? Yeah. Did you come out? Was that you came out a little it seemed like a little slow in that fight in comparison to what I've seen before? Um, no, I don't think I think the fight before that I came out slower. I really okay. came out with this one, kind of initiated my jab right away. I didn't really want him to get on the scorecards first. I I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure I won every round. Maybe mm-hmm. he won one round. Um but I never contr- you never can trust judges. <laughs> well, right. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I, I, I felt like I had it in the bag. But see, with that fight, people don't see the things that are going on behind closed doors. You mm-hmm. know, I was super sick like a week and a half out. Had to deal with that shit. You got to deal with all the pre- all the pressure of going up back to your home state where you're That from, was that home, right? That was Connecticut. Tickets, you know, and then on top of it, I'm fighting a fucking one and one guy. Now, in my opinion, he should have been 2-0 and because I feel like he beat his last opponent. And he was a very game opponent. And I hate fighting long guys in this shit because he caught me on this side. And it only takes a bat, especially from a long, skinnier guy. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, I don't really like the matchup. And I even told Vic that. I was like, I don't, I don't really like this matchup right now, man, just because it's kind of risky. I don't really like it. And my hands were still really hurt from... The Foy fight, I mean, the uh, the the rest play. I mean, I literally just fought two months bare knuckle prior, and it was a fucking war. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was a scrap. And I laid it all out on that fight. And then all of a sudden, they're like, we're making history in Connecticut. I'm like, damn it, man. I'm like, fuck. So I had a decision to make. You know what I mean? I'm like, do I miss out on becoming not only the first ever bare knuckle fighter at 135 to fight in Connecticut, but... To fight in my backyard where I'm from. I mean, that casino was literally 15 minutes away from where I was raised. And, wow. You know, so I just, I took the, I took the, I took the risk, man. I was like, fuck. And that could have, if I would have lost to that guy for anything, a cut or, mm-hmm. you know, because the only way I'm going to lose is if you completely knock me the fuck out or I'm just so battered that I can't continue. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or you break something on me and I can't continue. You know what I mean? Like, that's the yeah. only way I'm losing these fights. And, you know, I, it was a very technical match, but you also like when Nate Shook puts these together, when you put two counter fighters together that are long, you, you better expect a boring fucking fight, man. Not, it's yeah. not going to be too fucking entertaining, <laughs> especially when I have everything to fucking lose. You know what I mean? I got everything to lose in this fight. And I'm like, so I'm just ballsy to go out there and even do this shit in the first place. And it's like, the money was decent, you know, so I didn't necessarily do it for the money. I, I did it more so for the the legacy, man. I did it I did it to just, you know, like I said, become the first ever 135-pound winner to fight in the state of Connecticut. And, you know, mm-hmm. 
I, I ended up, you know, closing the show and, and, you know, winning the, winning, winning the fight. And yeah, like I said, I kind of coasted a little bit because of my fucking hands were a little jacked up and I, I knew what was coming next. And if I would have broke my hands, you know, or furthermore damaged them anymore, mm -hmm. then I'm sitting on the sideline for another six months. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And yeah. I don't, I didn't want to do that, man. I was like, you know, so I was able to get through that fight, you know, and I know Feldman was probably a little like, eh, We'll give you the we'll give you the title fight anyway, you know what I mean? But but mm -hmm. but I feel like I earned it though, man. You know they they were talking about title fight after Travis Thompson, and then they throw me in there with Perez, and Perez was a fucking dog. The first punch I hit him with, I knocked his front tooth com almost completely out, and he fucking ate that bitch. He was like, hey, wah. I was like, yo, what the fuck? And then he grabs me and just starts. I was like, oh shit, because I just wasn't expecting him to eat that punch, and he yeah. ate it and. Starts feeding me those uppercuts, and I'm trying to feed them back, and I'm trying to fight fire with fire. And when you're talking about a guy that cuts down from 160 to make 135, and he's fucking five foot ten, it's rough. And you don't have to be the 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 most technical, the most you know skilled fighter. You know, he mm -hmm. mowed down his last opponent in the same form, not not Keith, but the guy before that. And that guy was on his way up. Yeah, and he derailed him. You know, and that's what they looked to do to me. And I mean, he hung in there. I mean, I've never seen. A cut so bad I could see his skull. You know what I mean? I knocked mm. out a couple of his teeth. This shit was crazy, man. So I go from that. I mean, I emptied the tank. My hands were completely busted up. And then I'm right back in there two months later. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people don't see that. You know, the critics just want to, and eh, well, he, he, he's a slow starter and he's this and he's that. Well, I wasn't a slow starter with Travis. I do adjust to my fights. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. if you're going to be a counterfighter with me, it may be a counterfight, you know, fight. If you're going to be a straightforward pressure fighter, you're going to see a lot more action. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So this fight, you're going to see a lot more action. And plus, we both, I'm laying it all on the line. Everything that I've worked for, everything that I've visualized, everything that I've wanted, I'm laying it all on the line. He's not going to hit me and it's going to hurt and I'm going to fucking go down and be like, oh, I don't want no more. No, we we laying we laying it all out. We laying it all out there, man. So, you know. did you know? Did you know that w with the win you were gonna get the title shot? Had they told you that before your last fight? Well, I mean, they've been telling me that, man. Okay. So, talk okay. to cheap, you know what I yeah, mean? So yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll see. And then you know, uh, I think maybe a couple weeks later, maybe a month later, I get the phone call from Vic. I got fight mm. news. I'm like, I bet <laughs> y'all know what it is. He's like, what you think? I'm like, yeah, man, it's going to be Blias. Uh -huh. He's like, you want that fight? I said, bro, is the fucking grass green? <laughs> is the sky blue? Yeah. I mean, because, you so know, what you fight for? Shit, if you continue to fight backwards, you're going to mm -hmm. get God eventually. Or you're going to break something and you're going to get sidelined. So if I kept fighting backwards... You know, like I'm the I was the number one ranked guy at the time. Why the fuck am I gonna fight a number three guy? Why am I gonna fight another four guy? Like, mm -hmm. no, man, I'm gonna put all my eggs in one basket this fight, and I'm gonna fight the champ no matter who it is. Was it the opponent that I wanted? Not really, but it's the opponent that the universe wanted. And I pay attention because shit isn't free, man. So I pay attention. You know what I mean? And I'm like, all right, it is. It is what it is. This is obviously what y'all would the universe wanted, man. So this is where we're at, you know, and I, and I kind of let these things sort themselves out. You know, I just mm -hmm. continue to train, continue to work hard, continue to do my mental work and, and everything unravels the way that it's supposed to unravel. I feel like, and like I said, if I wanted to become legendary, what more legendary is it than to beat the guy who's stopping everybody in the first round? He's the boogeyman, right? Well, we'll see, you know, but I mean, real fight fans, you look at his record, you look at who he is. I've heard a lot about him, which I'm not going to really mention on here, but I've heard a lot about him, and, you know, he's beatable. He's he's 100% beatable, man. So I'm not going in here acting like he's some sort of fucking android and, and just not beatable, man. He's, he's definitely beatable. And nobody's – he hasn't been rock and socked with a fucking good clean one yet. So – and, I mean, I'm sure he's been hit a little bit, but – he ain't been hit like that yet. So that's what I look to come out here and, and do. We're going to battle test him, you know, and if he can go through that and, you know, then all right, man, then, then mm -hmm. maybe you are the, the real, real, real deal champ. But September 13th, we're going to find that, out. That was going to be my next question because, you know, I mean, you obviously know his style. It's it's on, it's right in front of you. I mean, there's right. five five or six fights and it's the same thing every over time. And over. 
And yeah. you know, when you when you look at it, when you look at a style like that, is that the type of style? I mean, I'm not asking you to reveal your strategic approach to this, but is that the style that you say, let's see if this guy can fight in the second round? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see if he can fight in the third I, I round. Think, let's see how I, his I cardio think, is. You know what I mean? You know, like the type of thing. When I fought Travis Thompson, he the same thing was on the line for him. They said, Hey, mm -hmm. you beat Reber, you get the title shot. Mm -hmm. So Travis is not only fucking mentally crazy. But that bitch, you, like, I've never really, because I let him stay with me, like, a year before we even fought. Like, I let him, you know, stay with me first camp when he fight Diaz. Oh, wow. So I got to know him. We became really close. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And he called me up, like, hey, brother, they want us to fight. You want to fight oh, me? Wow. And I was like, if that's what it is, bro, that's what it is. Then we fight. And he's like, all right. And like I said, I just whatever i mean at that time i technically had two fights because shady fucking didn't give me the fight that i wanted you know and that left a lot of unanswered questions like well he pushed him up against the ropes and he did this and yeah unfortunately a lot of my style was rope a dope playing the ropes you know doing this doing that and i i didn't i didn't look the greatest you know what i mean so a lot of people had a lot of unanswered questions about that and then i go from a guy like shady to a guy like travis you know what i mean mm -hmm. who's battle tested who's a savage, who's really hard to kill. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And and to go into that fight, the pressure that was in that fight, man, like they always say, pressure is either going to bust pipes or it's going to form a diamond. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I chose to be formed into a diamond, man. So how did you how did you meet up with um, All In Management? I've known Victor for a number of years. Great guy. I mean, he's passionate about this, passionate about – you guys, you know, helping you guys get to where you want to be. I mean, accomplish your goals. How did y'all come across? How did you come across him? I mean, and how did y'all finally link up? And he and he run your management. You know, well, run I had some real shitty management at the time. Slaughterhouse, mm -hmm. fuck you, Ryan, you an asshole. You know, he was talking <laughs> shit yesterday, so that's oh, what I got for him. And uh, you okay. know, he fucking, you know, right? Like, and we were cool, man, but. He did some slimy ass shit. He got Guerrilla Warfare, who was a clothing sponsor at the time, to sponsor or to act like he was going to be a manager. He was my sponsor at the time. He's like, he calls me up because I didn't want to sign with Ryan, only because I heard a lot of bad shit about him. They, they had fake blood results. They had done a bunch of grimy mm -hmm. ass shit. And then plus the shit that he was posting was like evil shit, man. And I didn't, I didn't really care for the dude. So I'm like, I'm not signing with him. And I told... My manager at that time, who was Shane, I said, hey, bro, I'll sign with you, but I don't want anything to do with Ryan. Well, they bamboozled me. It was really Ryan that had signed me, but used him to sign me. And mm -hmm. then when I found out about it, I was already locked in and I gave him a shot and I was like, whatever, man. And, you know, HD was also with them and mm -hmm. HD was seeing the shady shit that they were doing. And HD, I don't know how we got to talking about it. But HD was like, hey, well, I'm with a new management now. I'll plug you in. I said, really? He said, yeah, bro, I'll plug you in. So he plugged me in. And, um, you know, the, the rest was basically history, man. And then Vic got back to me. And, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just so grateful for that, man, because, you know, with, without, without HD, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here, man. You know, I reached out to HD because we were talking about it. He's like, yeah, bro, it's fucked up, bro. Ryan can't be trusted. He told us you were a sacrifice in that bear in that uh, game bread shit. He, he literally came to the gym and was like, oh yeah, man, we had a sacrifice Reber and blah, 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 blah. And oh, I mean, God. I'm like, what kind of shit is that, bro? Like, you don't <laughs> give a fuck about us. So, you know, I, I was, I always said after that, I'm like, I don't even want to deal with no more managers. I'm just going to manage myself. I'm already in a good position. They're going to have to fight me anyway. But to deal with a guy like Vic, I was like, yo, I'll, I'll sign with them. You know what I mean? And, and especially because Vic don't, you know, he's not doing it for the money. He's doing it because he wants to be a part of something great he wants to help us out you know yeah. what i mean so it's never about the money with vic he's never like hey well you owe me x amount of dollars right now i need that tomorrow you know what i mean he's yeah. just and he's always helping he's just he's just such an outstanding guy man and a lot of people are hating on him because of that shit bro but a lot of managers just got their hand in your pocket and are looking out for their best interest or they're looking out for their other fighters best interest you know and that's where i felt like i was when i was with slaughterhouse they weren't looking out for me because they had jared grant too and he was a 135er mm -hmm. so i feel like they were probably strategically trying to get me out of the fucking way so they, they could continue to let him chug along well ryan's plans got all you know derailed and then he fucking 
you know, went to BYB with Jerry Grant. You know what I mean? So okay. whatever, man. And, you know, that, that's what you get for being an asshole, bro. Like, I never did shit to the guy. And like I said, it's, it, I don't hate him. I don't hate nobody, man. I just, they did me dirty. And he's not going to sit here and look me in the face and tell me he didn't. You didn't tell me I was a sacrifice, bro. You didn't, because he was on, he jumped on the podcast I was on Wednesday. He was like, oh, Reaver gets knocked the fuck out or whatever the fuck he said. Wow. Like, fuck you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Keep hating. Keep hating. Let me ask you a question. And this is, I know, you know, I see Vic's videos when he put, when he brings in, signs new fighters. And at the end, I know he always has the face off with y'all. How did you keep from laughing? Because <laughs> I'm so, <laughs> ah, I just love it, man. <laughs> I don't because, know. because, you I know, can, it's like, this I is your, very this is your I'm lawyer. I'm a goofball, man. I'm a funny ass dude. But I, but at the same time, like when it's time to be serious, I, <laughs> Because, because, because I, I mean, I mean, look, Vic, I know Vic is pra- pra- trained in jujitsu and stuff like that, and and done some martial arts training, but he's a, he's a lawyer, um, I and I always laugh. I'm like, come on, man, come on, Vic, <laughs> come on, yeah, Vic. but I mean, yo, Vic's a gangster, though. Don't let <laughs> no, him, like, I love don't it. Let I him mean, lie to you, bro. Don't let him lie is. to you, man. I, I can love tell it. Vic. I look. I see the people that he's got around him. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like. Vic, Vic's a powerful dude, man. And but but you know what I love about Vic is he carries himself like he's one of us. Oh, you know what sure. I mean? You would never you would never think or know that Vic's a lawyer or has you know does what he does or has anything that he has. You know what I mean? He's mm, just a, of course. to me he seems just like a regular ass dude, man. And I love that about him, man. Like he's a genuine dude. I love Sam. Sam helps me out so yeah. much. You know what I mean? Those guys just I'm so thankful and grateful that i have them in my corner sam texts me almost every damn day you know what i mean do you need anything is there anything we could do they made they made fighting in connecticut so easy because them fucking mm-hmm. liberals up there make shit so hard you know <laughs> and, it, and it's a state that i really didn't want to go back to and fight to i'd rather call this my home because uh-huh. there's such bullshit and then they were booing me on top of it. i don't know if they were booing really? me or booing my opponent but oh, yeah wow. bro so they'd be like Boo, and I'd hear him, and I'd be like, fuck, man, bomb, 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 bomb. And I never really, like, with Foy, I'd start beating on him, and then he'd, like, he was so slick to, like, get out the way, and I'd look at his demeanor, and I'm like, fuck, I don't have him, I don't have him. And I just wanted to make sure that I had him before I really took off on him, and I never really mm-hmm. felt like I had him, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I kind of, yeah. like, I kind of pumped the brakes a little bit. I kind of stopped, you know what I mean? And like I said, I didn't want to fucking break my hands because they were already like, yeah. I was going through it, bro, with them hands. And like I said, I was really sick. Sam had hit me up. She's like, you know, when you got your MRI, you had a really bad sinus infection. I'm like, damn, Sam, why did you tell me? I could have got that fixed. She's like, well, I didn't want to worry you. I'm like, well, fucking thanks. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, and everybody's got something going on, man. Every, You know, it's not just me, but... That's the the beautiful thing. Like, he didn't know that. He didn't know what was going on. My opponent, that is. You know, he didn't know that I was sick. He didn't know that I had a bad camp. He didn't know that I was going through some shit. You know, and then, of of course, all the pressure. All the pressure to come back up. All the pressure to to perform. And then, once again, I'm fighting a fucking one-and-one guy as I'm 6-0 and or 5-0 and at that time. You know what I mean? It's like, I shouldn't even have been fighting him, man. (laughs) And and it's dangerous because bare knuckle, it's really... Either way, unless you look at the opponent, you're like, oh, he's just straight garbage. He's going to get his ass beat. And there's a lot of guys like that that would just pick up the phone just for the money, just for, you know what I mean? And I'm not one of those guys, you know, I'm like, but now that I'm at this level, like I said, I'm not, I wasn't fighting backwards anymore. I wasn't giving anybody an opportunity to either take my own. If anybody were going to take my O, it was going to be the fucking champ. It was going to be laid yeah. it all out on the line, and that was going to be it. I'm not, you know, because I've already put in my time. I've already made my sacrifices. I already took my pay cuts. You know what I mean? So it's like they gave me what I wanted. You know, I feel like I should be making $100,000, but it's cool, man. It's cool maybe in the future. You know what I'm saying? Especially to be a main event at the Hard Rock. You know what I yeah, mean? T- but- t- talk about that. I mean, the you know, main event in the Hard Rock. I mean, obviously, it's one of the biggest locations. Uh, it's one of the biggest locations I know the BKFC runs fights out of. I mean, they come here a lot. Oh, man. I, I, I mean, love I- it because I live here, so I'll be there. Yeah, and, and I've been um, to so many different locations, man. I travel to a lot of the shows. I've been to Albuquerque. That was a pretty cool um spot mm-hmm. when uh when my boy jr fought dotson that was a yeah. cool spot um i mean they got a lot of good venues was but that the john was that the john dotson fight yeah 
That, that was the, was that the Cuban fighter? Uh, no, Jr. is the Filipino one. Because there was a fighter that fought Dotson that I thought won that. I mean, I thought yeah, he was that winning, was our then... that was our, our not our. Uh, what, I I thought you mentioned Cuban. the one twenty five or the long boxer it, kid. It, it was a Cuban fighter that I that I saw yeah. that I thought he was winning. Yeah, that but fight he was a he... real boxer. You know yeah. what I mean? And he looked yeah. good, and mm-hmm. I feel like he won that shit. Too. I thought he won that fight, and, you know, and, but, and but but you know yeah. they they got to keep one of their poster boys around. So like, ah, oh, fuck. Uh, I'm surprised that's not. I'm surprised that's not on this card down here because that guy's from Miami, I believe. He lives down here. Yeah, I, think. I don't. I'm not. I'm not too sure where okay. where he lives. But yeah, I don't know what yeah. they're doing with him right now, man. Okay. I, I don't. But yeah, man. I mean, to fight that venue is definitely top three for me, and mm-hmm. may, maybe top one. You know, it's such a great venue, and I mean, when you fight there, you made it, and then you yeah. to main event. I mean, brother, I came from absolutely nothing, bro. I came mm-hmm. from no, I wasn't a, uh, one of these white guys out here that was privileged. I got kicked out of my house at fucking 18, was in mm-hmm. the streets, had to figure it out, ended up keeping my gratitude and integrity at an all-time high, ended up getting into the barber game, you know, then then I was able to make my money doing that. Now I own the barber shop. That's and, awesome. Um, you know, I, I just, I always move with good intentions, even, even, even if I feel like, if you're a scumbag, I just don't fuck with you. That's it. That's it. Mm-hmm. You show me your colors. I'm just, I, I don't care who you are. It's, it's over. You know what I mean? I don't keep any bad energy around me, mm-hmm. man. Did you, did you, uh, did you happen to go to that Sturgis card? I did not. We were trying Ooh. to, but all of a sudden tickets got stupid expensive. Me and Dave were going to fly out. And tickets. Go. They looked like they were standing in the street. It from was the aerial too. view. It, it was, was, a, it's a very it was weird. insane. It was like, yeah, I I wasn't sure how well because it was a rally event. So yeah, it's the motorcycle the fucking yeah. people there. So yeah, um, the at first rally. we were kind of like, what the fuck is this? And then as it you know, as the night went on, it was like actually this is kind of cool. You know that so that was pretty cool. And to see Connor's crazy ass there, that was cool. And like that's another thing. I mean, like one of the posters you probably can't see it, but I got a poster. Okay. I got a poster over here that's signed by Connor McGregor, and it's so weird. Like I'm trying not to mess this up because this thing's kind of janky, but. There's there's that poster right there, and okay. it's got Conor McGregor, and it was when he fought in uh, Eddie Alvarez. Yep, it's when he fought okay. Eddie Alvarez, and it's so weird, you know how the universe works, man. Because I got Conor McGregor on there, and there's Jeremy Stevens on there. You know what that, I'm saying? And that was that's the funny as shit, I mean, actually. You know who the fuck I mean? is this guy? Yeah, who the fuck is this <laughs> guy? That. You know what I mean? That, that shit was fucking. And I always, I always grew. You know, an attachment to Connor because he kind of reminded me of myself, you know, came from nothing, made his way up, you know. So I, I had the Connor McGregor story, you know what I mean? And I'm like, I always mm. followed him. I listened to all this shit, you know, I watched all his videos. And now all of a sudden, he's part owner in the organiza- organization that I'm fighting for a world title in, you know what I mean? So it's like, I mean, at this point in my life, I- I've completed the only thing that I need now is that strap. But other than that, I've literally, I could walk away from this shit and be like, I've done pretty much everything that I've set out to do. You know what I mean? I've, mm-hmm. I've, cause nobody, nobody thought I would make it this far. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Nobody did, yeah. but I believed in myself. I kept pressing forward. I kept going. And this is the result. And that, that's a huge message that I just would love to, to, to tell the, the younger generation. You know, even people who felt like they wanted to give up, man, just don't. You may you may be one more win away from, you know, becoming something fucking great, man. And, and no matter what it is, just just don't give up, man. Just just don't give up hope, man. And and always move with your good gratitude and good integrity, man. And and you mm-hmm. will be successful in whatever you do. Move with, you know, the 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 best energies that you can have are authenticity. And love, and that's it. And I mean, even with all these, all these guys, man, it's always all love. I got all love and respect for Alberto, man. We're 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 on the same mission. I don't have to be mm-hmm. a fucking complete douchebag asshole to him. I love his little accent, you know. I was I was kind of pissed off what he said about me though in the in the room where he said Reaper. Reaver, Reaver, Reaver. He's nothing. He's nothing. You know, no fucking question, but next fucking question. And I'm in the back room with my glasses down looking at this motherfucker like, you know what's next, motherfucker. I'm next for you. You know what I mean? And, you know, it's to me, like I said, it's just I, I absolutely love it. I love the situation that I'm in. I love getting on the podcast. I, I wish, you know, of course, now there's no press conference, you know, but whatever, man. Why like, not? 
I don't there know. Isn't? They just said there's no presser. There's going to be a presser, oh. but there's no, like, press conference. And I feel like, you know, because once again, it's homegrown guys on the card. You know what I mean? Okay. There's no, you know, King Mo fucked everything up. You know what I mean? I bet, I guarantee you if King Mo what was did, still on the card with Dave. What, he, what did he do, man? I, I don't know. He just, I think he got hurt. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So they pulled that fight. You know what Oh, I mean? yeah. He was on this card. That's right. Okay. Yeah, he was, right. he was co-main event. But, I mean, yes. how crazy – that this kid from nowhere that nobody's really ever heard of is the fucking main event at the Hard Rock and King Mo's fighting under me. You know what I'm that's saying? That, like, mean, yo, that's, that's, that, that's, that's some shit right there, man. That's some shit I'm going to be telling my grandkids back in the day. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> guess what grandpa did? <laughs> well, almost did. You know, so that that kind of sucked. You know, I was I was sad that me and Dave, you know, because we're very close, man, and I was sad we couldn't we couldn't be on the same card together. But you know what? It's cool. He got his um he got his break to go out and and fight in uh, Spain, man. So that's what we thought anyway. You know, when we first heard about us fighting, I talked to Vic, and then I heard nothing. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, waiting, waiting, waiting. All of a sudden, there's a BKFC card. We're playing fucking Fortnite. I got the phone right here, and Dave's telling me, hey, they should be announcing my fight tonight. I'm like, cool, man. All right. Yeah, hell yeah. And we're listening. I'm playing. I'm watching. I'm playing. I'm watching. Then all of a sudden, uh, I think it was Cyrus comes up. And he's like, we got a special announcement. And I'm like, oh, Dave, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna announce your fight. They're going to announce your fight. He's like, and then he, he announces me. And then Dave underneath me. I was like, wait, what? Wait, what? I was like. What? I couldn't even fuck. I couldn't even talk, bro. I literally ended the game right there. I was like, I, I can't even play anymore. I just, <laughs> I was so overwhelmed with emotion. Uh-huh. I almost fucking cried. I was like, I, I, I didn't know what to say. And then poor Dave's like, these motherfuckers told me I was fighting in Spain. He's like, oh, I'm not mad that I'm co-main event. I'm more mad that they told me I'm fighting in Spain. He's like, I, I, whatever. He's like, whatever. I, I mean, it, it's what, you know, I'm so happy for you, brother. I'm so happy for you. He's like, but mm-hmm. what the fuck, man? Because they didn't tell us that they were going to announce it tonight. Dad, damn sure didn't tell me. And I'm cool with that. I like surprises like that. That's a good surprise. A good girl. surprise. So, That's I a was, good surprise. I, you know, I was just I'm like, finally, bro. Finally. Finally. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. You know, I'm just like I said. I'm just so grateful to be in 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 this situation that I'm in, man. And 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 it's a lot of hard work and sacrifice, man. And that's that's really all there is to it. Is there's nothing. There's nothing more, man. How did you get into just fighting in general, um, whether it's MMA? But now, how, what what brought you to BKFC? Well, so I was training in Tampa at the time at a gym called Calta, mm-hmm. and uh, my my trainer at the time. Mr. Sherman Hansen was like, I got a bare knuckle guy for you to spar. And I'm thinking like, what, what do you mean a bare knuckle guy? I'm like, who the fuck is, you know what I mean? Like, what are you talking yeah. about? And I thought he was kind of just blowing smoke up my ass. And then here comes this kid by the name of Ab- Abby Velasquez, you know, that who just, just fought not too recent, maybe a couple months ago. And he was like, he was like, I'm going to bring him in because he's a year away and you're going to spar with him. I'm like, okay. So we start sparring, you know, and I start, you know, talking to him. And then I kind of got involved in that way. And then the tryouts came to Tampa. And when the tryouts came to Tampa, they had um, they uh, they had all the guys come in, you know, Dave Feldman. I think Anthony Rubble Johnson was there. And that was the tryouts with Lorenzo Hunt and Gene Herrera. You know, and these guys are studs, you know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. So here I am just training at the gym. And Kevin Smith comes along. And shout out to Kevin for this. He's like, you should try out, man. I'm like, for what? He's like, bare knuckle. I'm like, fucking no. And I was like, I'm not, because I knew nothing, bro. I knew nothing. And that's one thing that's got me where I am is don't lie to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can lie to everybody the fuck else, but do not lie to yourself. So I didn't really know about it, you know, and it was new and it was on the rise. And I was just like, all right, I'll try out, you know. So I'm trying out and, you know, I got my. I got my hair dyed. I got my headband on, and I'm looking nice training. All of a sudden, here comes David Filman, pulls me to the side. He's like, "What's your why, man? What's your why? Do you want to do this?" And I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! Hear me <laughs> out. I don't know nothing about this." I was like, "That motherfucker told me to try out, so I tried out. Now we're here. You know what I mean?" He's like, "What the fuck?" He's like, "Well, it." It, the, 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 it's, the offer's always going to be on the table, man. Just You know, and you could tell he was kind of mad, kind of like, 
whatever. And, you know, even Anthony Rumble Johnson later on that night when we were in the club, he was like, man, you should have took the contract, reviewed it. And if you didn't like it, then said no. I'm like, yeah, man, but I'm not, you know, I'm kind of new to this shit. And I don't want to lie to the man. And I don't want to look stupid and blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, I kind of left it at that. But the crazy thing was, and like I kind of mentioned earlier, the universe kept drawing me back in. So when I left that gym, I started training in the south side of St. Petersburg at at Keith Zerman's gym. And then all of a sudden, here comes fucking Julian Lane. You know, another trainer over there brought them in. So I just couldn't get away from these bare knuckle guys. So I met Julian and me and Julian hit it off right away, bro. I was like, oh, this is cool ass dude. And I knew him from Tuff, you know, because I was a huge MMA fan. Like, that's what I really wanted to do. Besides, Mm -hmm. whether it was boxing or MMA, I wanted to do either one. But I really liked kicking and shit, so I wanted to do MMA. So, you know, I was like, I was like, damn, man. And then I I linked up with Julian, and Julian was like, you know, the more and more we started to hang out and be around each other, he was like, he's like telling me how he wanted to manage fighters. So I thought about it, and I was like, you know what, bro? I'm going to be your first fighter. I want to be your first fighter. And he's Mm -hmm. like... Man, you full of shit, bro. You ain't you don't want to do this. You're not gonna do bare knuckle. I said, bro, I'm telling you, I'm basically already in. All I gotta do is talk to Dave and I'm in there. And he's like, All right, man, all right. So, you know, I, I gave him a shot, let him fucking kind of manage me for a couple fights, two fights, and then you know, he he kind of went through some hard times and I was like, Look, brother, I want you to focus on yourself. And that's when I got with Slaughterhouse and they yeah. take me around and then you know, the rest okay. is history. Now I'm with Vic and Fucking sick. When, when when you first met Julian Lane, did you say, "Let me bang, bro"? Oh, of course I did. <laughs> I looked over and I seen it was Julian. I said, "Julian Lane." I'm like, "Let me bang, bro." <laughs> and he did it, and I got it on video. You know, I still got that's the video. hilarious. I think it's on my Instagram, man. Like, it was just, I, I, he was a whole vibe, bro. That's and a like, trip. We we literally the same age, and we were damn. Our birthdays are like a month apart, man. So we oh, wow. think the same, we vibe the same. Uh-huh. You know, and and he's got a lot of great knowledge for me. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I surrounded myself around all these fucking killers, bro. And, I mean, he's a killer. He ain't as technical as Dave is, but he's a fucking killer. And he's got a very big respected name in Bare Knuckle. So, to run with him. And that's who I was known as for, like, my first three fights. Oh, that's Julian Lane's boy. That's boy. Julian <laughs> Lane's boy. You know what I mean? I was like, whatever. I mean, well, you know. When Vic, signed, when, when, it. when Vic signed him and he, and he posted that, I texted him. I said, let me bang, bro. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep forgetting Julian's with us, man. And, you know, yeah. that was – I mean, him had many talks about that because Julian was just like me. Mm-hmm. I don't need a fucking manager. I don't want a fucking manager. But when you get with somebody yeah, like Vic, that really – that's a game changer because Vic mm-hmm. ain't no, you know, p- pity pat manager, bro. He's the real deal. You know what I'm saying? He makes shit happen. You know what I mean? So – He's seen what I had going on. He liked what I had going on. He's like, you think I should sign with him, bro? I said, fuck yeah, I think you should sign with him, bro. The bang gang and the all in, let's go. You know I, I, tell, I, mean? I tell you, you met, when you mention that, it's just, it's the truth, you know, about, about all in. When he's, when he goes, because I remember when he was, when he was putting it together and we were talking and we were talking about names and. You know, he asked me my opinion. I mean, I'm nobody. I'm just, he, like, he knows I love mixed martial arts, combat sports, boxing, all that stuff. And 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 we were going talking about names or what have you. And I know this guy, and this guy does not do anything halfway. Yep. It's gonna be just like the name. Yeah, Go, going all in, like it's we're doing this, and he does yep. it in everything. And that's why when with fighters with him i know they're gonna be y'all are in great great hands oh and and, and with, i don't i don't doubt just, the great i mean stand up integrity, 100%. All that. and and i don't just see it i feel it more importantly mm. you know what i'm saying he makes it felt you know what i mean mm. you, you just you know when you got something good and like i said he's not he's not in it for you know Oh, I need to milk these guys for everything that they got and whatever. You know what I mean? Like he's genuine. He's a genuine dude, and he's genuinely help him out. And like, you know, you don't fuck him over. You know what I'm saying? You fuck somebody over like him, he's got you. Now you owe him a bunch of fucking money. You know what I mean? But I, I got, I got no desire, man. I mean, he's been such a, such an outstanding manager, friend. You know what I mean? So you know, it's and like I said, he just reminds me of just just an ordinary everyday fucking guy he doesn't have a big head he doesn't talk with an ego he doesn't do ego egotistical shit he just it's just him man you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and like i said he's got a very smooth team around him you know we got 
we got Kodak with him, you know, the cameraman, he's the man, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everybody he brings around, his boy that he had come up there and shoot film. Like I mentioned again, Sam, like Sam is fucking amazing, man. I love Sam. You know, this, and to have all those people that help me and that are around me, like, it's just, it's just such a breath of fresh air because then I don't like, when you don't have that, you got to do that all yourself. Like, you know, they call Mm -hmm. me up like, Hey, you're going to fucking St. Pete's go do your medicals tomorrow. You good with that? Yep. Hey, we got you. And like I said, they, they, because of all that, all the crazy shit in Connecticut, like, I don't know if I would have fought there if it wasn't for them, because Mm -hmm. there's just too much stress. They wanted me to get a fucking EKG and an MRI and all this other crazy shit. And I'm like, dude, I, you know, and she set all that up for me, you know what I mean? Made it so easy for me to just, okay, that, that's, that works. You know what I mean? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Like, all I got to do is show up. And and then just like for the fight, all I got to do is show up. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? The hard part's pretty much over. I've almost sold fifteen thousand dollars worth of tickets, and I'm not even from Miami. That's that why was, they're gonna fucking love uh, me, man. You know I got, what I'm I, saying? I got a couple more before we before I let you go because I know we've been here gosh, forty five minutes, man. We could, I could do this all day. Look, me too. You, you <laughs> mentioned Connor, Connor McGregor, and that Jeremy Stevens thing. Did you see that Connor McGregor said, "Me and that who the fuck is that? Is this guy? We could be a good fight in the in the BKFC." I mean. He's going to have to, bro. He's going to have to fight. You, you can't think? be all that talk, Mr. McGregor, and not show up now, boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, but he's going to realize real fucking quick. It's not it's the same. It's a different animal. It's different. You can't kick in this, my man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's you different. You know, hey, if the, and that's with Blias. He's going to figure out real quick, you know, fuck. If he starts getting that ass whooped with the hands, I've already seen him shoot in on somebody with boxing gloves in the first fucking round. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like I'm scrolling on Instagram one day and I'm I'm just scrolling casually and all of a sudden I see this boxing event going on so I stop and I'm watching it and it's like boxer shoots in on other boxer and I'm looking at it, I'm like what the fuck? What the hell? And then I'm like wait a second. That's that dude Blas that that just signed with BKFC. I'm like holy shit. And I'm I'm just like I was and then that, next thing you know a year and a half later we're fucking fighting, bro. I'm like wow, wow. this is crazy. You know what I mean? That's so wild. You know, it's it is, man. It's just wild. So you have you have tickets left to sell. I mean, how do I, people... I, de- I I probably will come down there with a few left to sell. Hell yeah. So for people that want tickets, uh, how do they reach out to? Because I know that's how. You guys I mean, my my socials would probably be the best. Inbox me, um, Royal mm-hmm. William Reaver on uh, Instagram. That's probably okay. the best place. Same thing on uh, Facebook, man. Anybody you know still needs tickets because that event will sell out. Cause mm-hmm. they're just awesome events, you know? So I probably will have a couple more and I will be down there Tuesday. So I'll have okay. Tuesday, Wednesday to sell them. I won't have Thursday cause I got to turn them in by then, but I'll have those yeah. two days. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, man. We should and I know, them. and I know that sometimes, uh, at least I know when I got tickets one time, I got them, uh, from at Vic's office. Yeah. And I don't know if you're going to be in his office at any, at any point next week. Oh, I'm sure. But- but um, yeah, folks, if you want tickets to BKFC 66, you do want, not if, you do want tickets to you don't BKFC want to miss this shit. I mean, 66. the whole event is. You got, you got Ryan Reber and Alberto Blas fighting for a belt. You got look, HD on the on the co-main event, um, you know, who's a local guy from South Florida. I actually talked to HD earlier today, you know. Amazing guy. You, you know, get get with one of these guys. All the information will be in the description of this video. So reach out to Ryan directly if you want tickets for this event. Don't go to Ticketmat. Go directly nah, to these man. fighters because it, it benefits them. Yes, you're supporting the fighters, and there's yeah. no taxes. If you're going to get exactly. five tickets, you're going to be paying $120 in taxes. Exactly. Guaranteed. You know exactly. what I mean? So it's just easier to go through me. And I've already had people hit me up. Some of uh, Lewis's people, they're like, man, Lewis isn't fighting. Can you scan? And I have no clue who these cats are. I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> and what I do is I strategically, because I had so many of them, I said, hey, let's say you wanted five tickets. Yeah. I pull those five tickets aside. I put them in an envelope. I put your name on them. Put them in yep. my bag. You wanted two tickets. Put them in there. Put them in my bag. Boom. Good to go. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I got I got everybody's shit ready to go right now. You know what I mean? So anybody that hits me up, they'll be in will call or we can link up or however we need to do it. You know what I mean? Easy work. But yeah, this is an event. It's These events are awesome, man. Absolutely awesome. You know what I mean? Shout out to Dave Film and they shook. You know what I mean? You guys are doing a hell of a job. Conor McGregor coming in, man. Shout out to all you guys, man. Big Sam, love you guys, man. Like, let's do this, man. 
All right. How does this fight end? Uh, it's not going the distance. And someone's O has got, got to go. To go. <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't going to be me. All right, man, Ryan, I appreciate you being on with me tonight. Um, I thank you so much. I wish you all the best. I am sure I will see you next week at some point, probably at the fight, because I will be there. Best of luck to you, my you, man. My I appreciate you, man. You have hey, a good I one. You. And um, your line is perfect, man. I mean, did you do that yourself? Damn right. <laughs> yeah, you know, I kind of shoot myself in the ass for doing this because I'm like, I, you know, being a barber, I'm like, man, I want to do something different for these fights. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I started doing this shit, and now I feel like it's my signature. Now I feel like every damn fight I have to do it. Now it's like a, like a, how do you call it? Like a, um, a superstitious thing. And mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck, if I don't have my good lines, you know? So do you I'm have, you, do you have your walk? You have your, in, your, your walkout gear ready to go? I mean, oh, yeah. you, are you coming? Oh, yeah. Are you coming? Well, look, let I'm going to ask you. you. It's, Are you it's, how, how I get this? You see that? See that Jason mask right there? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. So you know what the theme's gonna be? Are you? Oh, so you're not gonna come out with a? You're not gonna come out with a Cuban flag? Nah, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> maybe. I'm Cuban, man. So I, hey, you're in South Florida. Listen, I I love my Cubans. Don't get this shit twisted. <laughs> Cubans are my favorite, bro. Yeah. Like I. Especially the women, all right? Uh, so, okay. you know, I, I I I got nothing but respect for my opponent, for his family. Uh, he's a he's a hardworking man, you know what I'm saying? But look, come September 13th, someone's O has got to go. <laughs> we, we are looking and forward I'm, to I'm this looking fight. forking forward to it, baby. Looking forward to it, man. I thank you again so much, brother. Thank you, my right? man. I appreciate all you. Right, I appreciate man. your time. Thank you, bro. Thank all you, right. Brother. Have a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Ryan Reber. He is fighting again Alberto El Indio Blas for the bantamweight belt at 135. BKFC 66 Hard Rock Live. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, you can reach out to Ryan. The link will be in the description for his, um, his Instagram. Reach out to him directly. Be at that fight. It's a big, big card. It's gonna be a lot of it's gonna be fireworks. I don't know if that fight's gonna get to the second round. These guys are gonna come. It's I mean, these are two-minute rounds. Bloss is gonna come forward. Reaver's gonna come forward. It's gonna it's gonna be some fireworks at this fight. I, I I'm excited. I'm very excited to see this fight. And like he said, someone's O has got to go. That's all we got for tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you again to All In Management, Victor DeMesman, DeMesman and Dover Law Firm. God bless. Come on now.